Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kieran and I like to help people with their spiritual awakening, help guide people using a spiritual perspective, all sorts of good stuff like that. Uh, today I wanted to talk about five ways to connect to your spirit guides and how to know that you're actually really connecting to them and not just going insane, right? Because there's a lot of doubt um, in the spiritual journey anyway and anything that you can do to alleviate it, uh, that would be, right, much needed uh, advice. So I'm going to give you guys some of that at the end. But basically right now I'm just going to go over five ways for you guys to just connect with your spirit guides. Some of them might be a little bit paradoxical or you probably already know them a little bit, but this is just going to help uh, affirm what you may already know. Okay, so let me just get right into it. Uh, the first way to connect to your spirit guides, and this is the most obvious, is meditation, right? Meditate. Um, so you can do this, you know, self uh, guided meditation, whether you use um, a program on YouTube, right? Uh, Jason Stevenson is the guy that first comes to my head. That's usually the guy that I use. Um, or you could do it without any sort of uh, guided meditation at all. You could just go outside and sit in the grass and meditate if you like that. Some people like having ants crawl over their feet. That's cool too. Whatever floats your boat, right? So. Uh, meditation is a really great way because what it does and how I like to think about it is kind of like a um, like you're picking up a phone and making contact like you're actually like you know picking um like you're choosing the connection like you're, ch you're making an intention because when you meditate it's basically like the goal anyway is to clear your head clear your thoughts to get you into a place where you're more where you're more um, open to things and so meditation is a great way to be to be open to connecting with your spirit guides because um, it, it will allow them to to basically uh, kind of come into your um, consciousness, right? Integrate their energy with you and to um, to basically help you out, right? So with meditation, um, there's a lot of guided meditations, like I said, that basically are like you know meet your spirit guide, uh, you know talk to your spirit guide. Have sex with your spirit guide, uh, probably not that last one, but all to do with meeting your spirit guide. And what happens with this is, you know, people get kind of spooked um, because they're not sure if they can trust the uh, the information that they're getting, right? You know, how do you trust that um, that somebody actually is speaking to me, right? So I'll give a small little example um, just for you guys to kind of know uh, with meditation specifically. Um, when I first did a guided meditation on meeting a spirit guide and technically in this example it was a guardian angel but it's the same type of thing and I'm just gonna go with it um, uh, it was last year and I asked uh, or I did um, a little guided meditation I think it was like 30 minutes or so and it, at, at the end of it you know it was like okay and, and the voice you know whoever it was was like now ask for your spirit guides name or your guardian angels name in this case and it turned out to be Muriel okay the name Muriel I don't know if that means anything to you but it's basically a um, a guardian angel, an angel about, uh, you know, intuitive people, empathic people, um, kind of about animals and emotional people. Trying to just like, she's a, she's an angel that helps balance out emotions for empaths and stuff like that, basically. And I had never heard of the name before. Um, I grew up kind of atheist up right up until basically I was not an atheist. And then, uh, so I, I didn't ever heard of the name at all. Like, even if I had somehow subconsciously stored it in my mind like people hoard things inside their house or that cheese that's still in your fridge that nobody ever threw away even if that was the case it would have no personal meaning to me right so i could have picked any name at all and it would have made more sense right um like i had personally had heard of uh arc different archangels or different angels but i never heard of muriel before right so and then the fact that i'm empathic and intuitive and the fact that she also had to do with animals and and, and the website that I even um, remembered uh, that I remember going on to learn about Muriel was even talking about um, like uh, walking animals like pet sitting and stuff and at the time I remember considering doing that as like a side job I never did uh, because I think I was just so excited that it turned out to be real that I was like oh I don't have to do the thing I wanted to do I don't know but uh, it was great because I got to learn about this cool new aspect of myself, right? This new type of spirituality. And so, but I accepted the answer that came to me. And that's the same thing you guys have to do with your spirit guides is you can't, um, you can't, ex uh, you have to accept the first name that comes in your head. And that might be kind of silly um, because with, with um, be 
you know, because there's so much conditioning going on and you don't know whether you can trust it or not, right? But uh, you might get a name that, that sounds ridiculous, you know, like uh, whatever, uh, uh, you know, Arthur Murberberber, I don't know what the name would be, something silly, right? It could be something you can't spell, can't even pronounce, can barely understand, but it makes sense to you, it resonates. Or it might be something a little bit more human, right? Like, like Bob, and you might be like, my spirit guide's name is Bob? Really? I don't even talk to people in real life with that name, so why would I talk to a spirit guide whose name is Bob? Like, that's the name? Awesome. But remember that these names are just, um, they're just labels, right? They're not super important. They're just what, they're just um, like the sounds of what you can use to communicate, right? Um, like names don't really mean anything. They're just there to classify things, right? Like if somebody said to me, uh, hey, did you hear that uh, sharks are mammals now? All sharks are mammals. They're just like whales now. I would be like, yeah, okay, that's fine with me. I don't give a shit at all. Let them all be mammals. Fish can be mammals too if they want. I don't care at all. I don't even know why whales are mammals. So they're just names. doesn't really matter. The point is that, you know, it just, it just gives you something to classify. So you don't have to judge the name too much, whatever it may be. My spirit guide's name is Marcus. Um, that's one of them. I'm sure I have more than one spirit guide. But that's the most recent one that I uh, that I connected with. And when that name came into my head, I was like, what? That's not even, I don't even know anybody in real life with that name. So why would that be my spirit guide's name? But, and I'll go on to this later on, it is his name. I've connected with him many different times. It's very weird, but also really cool. So the second way that you can do this by connecting with your spirit guides, um, and you probably want to do this after you meditate because it's a, it's a great way of just transitioning, is automatic writing or journaling, right? This is basically, uh, um, can't even pronounce the word basically, almost had a stroke. Uh, this is basically you guys um, writing, kind of channeling your angel, channeling that energy, channeling the spirit guide. Um, I just noticed I kind of use angel and spirit guide kind of interchangeably sometimes, so just, just know that I mean spirit guide. Uh, I get confused in my head sometimes. Um, but automatic writing is just a way of letting the words flow through you uh, from your spirit guide. Um, so you might be sitting down and you do a little, um, do a little affirmation, you know, dear spirit guides, uh, please, um, Tell me what I need to know in this moment. You might want to ask a little question, type it out. I prefer to type it on a laptop because with uh, compu uh, doing it freehand journaling, uh, that's just asking for carpal tunnel syndrome. I don't need that shit in my life. I already do enough writing. So I use a laptop, whatever you is comfortable with you. But the idea is you ask a question, you know, like um, uh, something you need a uh, resolution on, even something that you might not even have any idea about, right? Uh, something like, what does this mean? Uh, what kind of yeah, a term maybe you heard about spirituality. Um, you might want to find out more information about it, find out more information about yourself, possibly relationship that you're in, twin flame, the connection that you might be in, etc., etc. Um, the idea is that you do not judge what's being written. Um, you just let it flow until the energy is gone. And I've started to do this for the past couple of weeks, and it's been really incredible for me. Uh, personally, kind of life-changing a little uh, in a way, not too life-changing, um, it hasn't, you know, given me a six-pack or a bunch of money, but it's been a way of relieving stress and getting stuff onto, um, into a creative, creative expression, really. It's just been a way of releasing stuff that's stored up inside your body, information that you might not even know that you have or that you can get, right? So it's a great way of just um, letting stuff go, right? I like to think about it as kind of just opening up a new door, and it just, whatever comes in, it's like, oh, okay, this is it. And this is usually, like, It'll come in like a different voice sometimes, right? You keep writing until you hear something different. Uh, what you hear something that, or hearing it until it sounds different when you're reading it, right? To you in your own voice, it, it, it'll have like words that you might not uh, use in your regular life. Okay, so I'll give you guys an example. Um, when I channel a specific spirit guide, um, she, I'm gonna say she, uh, because uh, you know it's just easier. They don't really have genders, right? But um, it's the words that she used that we would think as feminine, maybe. And anyway, she uses like um, words like little a lot. I don't really use little that much. Like a little child, like child, sweetie, that, that type of things. It makes me think of like an older woman, kinda. Like, or how, you know, or like an older man who calls like young waitresses, like sweetheart, 
that kind of thing, you know, because they get away with it because they're old. But I wouldn't get away with calling a waitress my age sweetheart. They would think I was a creep. So I don't use that word. And maybe I will when I'm 80, but I don't ever use that word. And that's what I'm trying to say to you guys is that it will be like some things, I mean, the voice, even the emotions that you have when you're writing it out will be a little bit different. Um, when I channel Marcus specifically, uh, it's a very, um, it's a very interesting type of energy that flows through me. It's not, um, it's, it's more light. I want to say it's not, it's not my intellectual mind rolling through the stuff. It's, it's just like, I'll, I'll feel like a type of energy that's kind of like goofy a little bit. Um, and not even like specifically goofy. It's, it's a weird type of like, it'll just, it'll just be like times when I'm writing in the sentence where I'll just feel happy. Kind of, you know, and it's just like the energy and it's like, hmm, this is cool. And then, then it goes away, but then it comes back again, like two more sentences later or something. Right. And, and then at the end you get to read whatever it is you wrote and kind of, you'll be able to tell just using your own mind now, what, what was the information? Was it helpful? What did it, did it come from a place of love? Did it inspire and help or did it ridicule? And you'll be able to tell reading it. And if you feel loved and inspired and resonating with the information that you just wrote, that is from your spirit guide. Okay, and it's a really great tool for just letting, um, just letting you know the information come to you, and and it'll f let it flow through you. Don't judge the words that you're writing. Just kind of be like a typist, like you're just typing out what somebody else is saying, and then at the end you just kind of edit it, right? Let the spelling mistakes. Don't try to correct the shit. The spirit guys don't give a shit if they spell the words wrong. They, you know how to spell them if you were taking the time. It's basically you're just going super fast and just writing it out as just as the information comes, right? Like when I do it, I, I say that little prayer, I ask the question that I type out, and I wait kind of like 30, 40 seconds uh, for, like I ask them to flow through me, like use their energy, and it takes a little bit, but eventually I start getting a little shifty, feel some energy coming in, like I have to express it, like, you know, if you've ever been, a, like you've ever had pent up energy that you had to just get out of your system, that's how it feels, and I just start typing until, I kind of exhaust myself and sometimes I'll just yawn afterwards as if like, yeah, I just did something, right? Exhausting. So that's a great way. Uh, number three is also find out how you learn. Find out what it is in the past that you've, that's actually helped you, helped you guys learn. Like you might be clear audience, um, which I don't think is in the dictionary, but uh, I think you probably can guess what it means. Just basically listening or um, learning through music, right? Having that intuition with music. Personally, this is how I learn the most. Um, you might like listening to new songs. You might want to ask your spirit guides and stuff like, hey, like if you guys, um, if you know, um, I would love to learn more about this subject, please give me a, a song that will really resonate and teach me like a, like give me um, a sign type of thing through a song. Because you might notice that this has happened in your life already many times, or you might have learned visually. You might see signs like, um, you know, uh, even if it's just something like angel numbers, one 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 two 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 three three three. I see ten ten a lot recently. The other day I woke up at ten ten. Um, it was just like I was like, oh, just check my phone. Ten ten. I was like, oh, oh obviously angels. Great, thanks guys. Uh, you know, and you have to learn about what the angel, what the numbers mean. You can look it up, do the information, but find out how in your life, even before your spiritual awakening, that you've actually uh, that you've actually learned because. Spiritual awakening is just you becoming aware of a new sense of yourself in the world and of course spirit guides angels, etc But they've always been there. You know what I mean? Like I've always learned mostly through music or books Like I'll see a title of a book sometimes it just stands out and I'll grab the book read it and I'm like Oh, that was exactly what I needed so you might be like that too and and especially with the clear audience people who might resonate with this uh, or that type of um, information you through song and music and stuff is um, personally, you know, I listen to new music all the time, like just by chance. I always I have. So sometimes I'll, I'll go to I'll go to like a website called Hot New Hip Hop. Guess what kind of music they have on there? And I'll go to that website and I'll play uh, just random songs, see what I like by artists or whatever. So I'm regularly checking out new music anyway. So it's not um, it's not like out of the realm of possibility for me to get a sign. You know, if I asked, hey, spirit guides. Let me uh, get um, a sign from a song, something that's relevant to my situation, whatever it is that I asked. And, you know, and then of course it's going to happen because I'm already checking for new music anyway, right? So you might want to take that uh, again. And this is just a quick aside. Try to use these methods um, more than just one of them, right? Uh, try to use them more consistently. Don't just, um, 
don't just do meditation and then kind of give up. Use more than one, right? Two or three is usually the best way. Um, but yeah, find out how you learn, um, remember how you've always learned and just try different methods of doing that. You know, try the music, try the reading, try numbers, just try, you know, ask your angels how they communicate with you and how you best receive it because they're not going to give you something that you would never, ever look at. They, you know what I mean? And you might be trying because you might have seen somebody else do it in a specific way and you're like, oh, well, they connect this way, so I better try it that way. And then you have no luck with it. But it's not about them, it's about you. So your guides are going to help you in your frequency. So you might learn in your specific way. So try and figure out what it is, narrow that down. It probably, surprisingly, will only take you about 10, 15 minutes to really actually understand how it is that you best learn in relation to your spirituality. Like, of all the signs and all the experiences and all the little epiphanies that you've received, where have they come from? Random conversations that you heard? You know what I mean? Has it always been audio? Were you in a coffee shop? Did you hear somebody say something? Uh, were you in a dungeon? Where, where were you guys at that you heard something? You know, Disneyland, who knows where you guys were at? But you might have heard, overheard someone talk about something. You're like, oh shit, yeah, that's right. Uh, I remember specifically, I was in a bar um, when I was in Ireland uh, like a couple months ago. Um, yeah, a couple months ago. And it was, uh, I was in a bar by myself. It's kind of sad, <laughs> but I was on vacation, so it doesn't really count. And I was just sitting there drinking whatever it was, a cider. I can't handle real beer, so I drink sweet things. And uh, I was waiting for, um, I don't know what I was waiting for, to, to close, sadness to go away? Who knows? And this lady was talking to the bartender, this young woman, and she was saying to him uh, every week or every morning she would, um, she would drink hot water. It would, like, clear out her system. And that would allow God knows what, I don't know the science behind it, but she said that it made her feel better. And when I was listening to that, I, it really resonated with me for some reason. I didn't know the science. I never bothered looking it up. If there was any actual reason for that to work, I have no idea. Still don't. I'm not going to look up the information, but I tried it for a couple of days. It actually worked. It helped. It was better than I expected it to be. Um, it, I stopped after three days, I think, just because I tried it out to see if it worked. It wasn't necessarily game-changing, but it was just interesting. And it was like, yeah, I do kind of feel like a little bit better. And regardless of whether or not that was placebo, who knows. But th that, the fact that I just overheard something that resonated with me and then tried it out, that's kind of what I'm talking about, right? You might learn like that in your life. You might get those a lot. Right, and that's kind of clear audience as well. So just pay attention to how you guys um just pay attention to how you guys learn uh, and that will be super helpful because obviously that's gonna be the best way for your angels to communicate with you guys. Uh, sorry, my throat's getting dry. And I had no water in it. Okay, so number four, uh, simply ask. Okay, this is gonna be kind of simple, um, or it sounds simple. Um, because it's to simply ask, yeah, no shit, man, simply ask, right. Well, what I mean is that when you just ask and let go, like if you ask for their name or you ask for them to connect to you, just just let it go, let go of the expectations. Just, you, don't, you know, you don't have to meditate, you don't have to do the automatic writing, you don't even have to find out anything. Just sit, lay down, or just take a moment to yourself and be like, um, you know, dear spirit guides, please present yourselves to me, um, I, you know, uh, give me a sign. And then just, you know, you can wait in that moment. Maybe there'll be something, you'll feel something or, you know, wait. You might want to ask for something specifically. Some people, or what I like to do is I like to write down um, or type it out on my phone, kind of. I'll be like, you know, dear universe, spirit guides, whatever. Uh, if this is the case, you know, if X is so-and-so or if, you know, if I want a conclusion on this, let me, um, let me see this, whatever, right? Let me see this word, sign, etc. And the idea is that I usually give them, uh, 48 hours two to three days um, because by the third day I've forgotten anyway but you know if you ask uh, to go see a um, you know if, if you if you're asking about well is this person like can I try if I can trust this person let me see a you know a yellow duck okay and you let go of that um, you let let go of it right and then and you know the two or three days whatever the time that you set yourself for you know you could see it in a, in a synchronistic way like you just turn your head and there's a yellow duck, right? And you're like, oh shit, it's real. But when you don't let go of that idea, you, you know, you go searching for it, 
and like you might go on YouTube and like you're just scrolling through animal videos like secretly hoping to just see a duck so you can confirm whatever it is that you want to tell yourself and, that, and then when you get that yellow duck inevitably you're, it feels cheapened and it feels like the universe didn't do anything and it feels like you can't trust them but really all that was saying was that you couldn't trust yourself so it's best to just let go let things flow and just trust that they you know don't micromanage the angels that was one of the best advice I ever read and an article was don't micromanage the angels because I remember I was always doing this shit because I wouldn't see it immediately and I was like damn you angels get on your shit or spirit guides get on your you know I want to know how come I haven't known it's been nine minutes what the hell yeah it turns out you actually have to be a little bit more patient and let go of the expectations but just simply ask and they'll actually do it they'll fulfill whatever stupid random request that you have trust me I've asked for some stupid shit and they have absolutely come through. And I don't even need to ask for it. Sometimes you already know the answer. So five, and this is a little bit weird, but you're going to just breathe them in. Okay, so you guys know what breathing is, right? Slow breaths, deep breaths, pref prefer preferably laying down. It doesn't have to be laying down. Sometimes I go outside uh, barefoot, place my feet on the ground firmly, and just kind of relax into the moment. But basically what you do is you, you breathe them in. I, I do this sometimes. I lay down myself and um, behind me on a bed. You can see it. There's a bed back there. I do sleep on a bed. And there is, uh, sometimes I'll just, I'll relax, sit maybe for like, mm, it usually takes about three or four minutes. Sometimes it's longer depending on how many thoughts are in my head, you know. Um, but it will, um, it will basically, it'll feel like an energy coming over me, like through my feet, up until my body, top of my crown chakra, top of my head. And it'll feel like I'm tingly, like goosebumps, like uh, pumped, like energy, a sense of love. Uh, you know, my heart will kind of flutter a little bit. I'll feel this, this basic kind of, um, just this loving energy. It's not like panicky or frantic or even like the type of energy where you got to go, go, go right uh, it's not like caffeine or anything it, it's just it's a, it's a it's a relaxing type of flowing energy and I'll ask you know just dear spirit guides please please surround me with your love and your energy and be with me in this moment so I'm empathic and intuitive and whatnot so I feel things I feel other people's energy I feel you know I like I don't like hanging around with a bunch of people because I feel I get bombarded with shit so I just set up boundaries and stuff but that's just me um, because I'm empathic, right? But that's because that's the way that I learn. Okay, that's one of the ways that I learn. So this might be helpful to you, even if you don't, even if you've never tried it, or you might not even know, or you don't even consider yourself that empathic. It might behoove you, it's a good word, behoove, it might behoove you to just let it happen and see, and see where it goes. You might be surprised. You might actually feel something and go, huh, you guys are with me, you guys are actually there. And that's a great way to, to know that they're actually there is, is by feeling, right? Because feeling is... That's at least the closest way you can get to 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 not right, to uh, to basically knowing in the three D right because you can't see them they're not going to appear before you with like a box of chocolates right oh thank you I was wanting chocolates and you just showed me oh that's awesome thank you no it doesn't really work like that but if you can feel them that's a really great way because it's a transition isn't it the whole spiritual awakening is is a way of feeling and knowing with a with an inner intuition. And this is a this is a, honestly a great transition into what I wanted to talk about at the end, which was, <clears throat> which was how to know that you're actually connecting with your spirit guides. And so this is what um, I meant earlier when I said it was a bit of a paradox, is when you're when you're actually like awakened, you, you see things differently, or you're being called to see things differently, and you're basically transitioning into that estate of seeing things from a 5D perspective in terms of energy rather than what it is that you can't. Uh, you can't see it physically in the 3D, right? So being called to believe in something that you can't see seems kind of silly. It seems illogical and your mind doesn't like that very much. Your mind likes concrete things you can put inside of a box. I don't know if this is what a box looks like, but uh, right. So it likes those things. It likes to control all that sort of good stuff. And this type of stuff is very not controllable. It's very random and sporadic and it's more about intuition and feeling and wisdom than it is about seeing and hearing, etc. Like having things presented to you in the immediate vicinity of your face and so, or your experience. 
And so it's paradoxical because when you start to doubt yourself, if you're doubting a lot, like, oh no, there's no way, ah, I didn't actually connect with anybody, it was placebo, it was weird, ah, nah, I don't like, nah, forget about it. Uh, that's actually a great sign because if you're on this journey or any type around this journey, you'll understand that there that, that doubt is great because it allows you to understand where the line is. It's like, okay, I have doubt, but I'm spiritually awakened. So I should trust in the part that isn't doubt. So you, so you have the doubt and it's great because you can see the doubt and go, oh, okay, well, that's the old way of thinking. So I know where that is. That's off to the side here. Okay, that's great that I have it. Thanks for being there. But I know that it isn't true. Like if you can just separate yourself from the doubt and like just look at it as if it was like a, an object in front of you and be like, oh, that's where it is. But also like I don't have to, I can just put it to the side. I can, don't even need to look at it because this over here is actually what I'm being called into. I'm walking towards this part, this experience, this new way of thinking. This is old, so I don't even need to focus on it at all. You can be aware of it. That's fine. But don't focus on it. You know, you know what's true. So it's a bit of a paradox. When you have doubt, it's great because you can actually look at the doubt and go, oh, obviously it's wrong. I don't care. I know. So you might look at the doubt immediately and think, well, it's so, I have doubt. It sucks. I wish I didn't. But it's just there because, you know, because it's trying to show you or your spirit, yourself, your higher self is trying to show you where the truth is. Right? So that it's a paradoxical thing, but it's a great way of looking at it. It's a very... It's a positive perspective and a truthful perspective on the lies and the deceit and the conditioning that you've grown up with. And it'll, it'll make it easier for you to transition into that new way of looking at things from an energy perspective, from the 5D, right? Um, and again, just some helpful advice here. When you guys do these, or if you resonate with any of these and you guys do more than one, don't give up after the first time if you don't see anything or fear any, um, feel anything. Uh, because even if you were successful, Let's just say you might get successful once and go, ah, they're real. Cool. Awesome. And then you stop for like four or five days and then the doubt comes back in and then it makes you forget about the time that you were successful, right? Because four or five is enough days for you to go like, nah, it, it wasn't. Forget it. Even if it was successful and if it wasn't successful, you're more likely to be like, it doesn't work. It's never going to work. And then you give up. So what you want to do is you want to try more than one method. You want to do it more than and, and you want to do it consistently, right? You want to keep doing it because it'll allow you guys to get into um, more of a flow. And connecting with your angels is great um, just because it allows you to experience a new side of yourself, a new side of spirituality. And that, to me, is super cool and worth it. You know, it's, it's worth it. It doesn't take that much time. Um, it's easy. It's free. Uh, you know, and, and you feel better for it. You feel like you're discovering a new aspect of your own higher awareness, your own self, the universe. And it just feels great. So hopefully those things helped you guys. Um, just trying to see if I had anything else that I wrote down, but um, it looks like chicken scratch. So hopefully that stuff was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if it was. Let me know if it resonated. Uh, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, namaste. That's what people say, right? Spiritual people, they say namaste, right? Yeah, okay. Namaste, guys. Have a good one.